All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm setting up the, um, the ultrasound for uh, vascular access. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is put ultrasound jelly on the probe cover. Okay. And I'm going to place a um, probe cover over that to hold that jelly in place. Okay. I'm going to clean the, the site, the arm, everything with chloroprep before I start. So we got sterile access. And for the actual lubrication on the arm, I'll use sterile jelly, sterile okay. lubricating jelly. Okay. Rather than the um, ultrasound. All right. So I'm doing the sterile technique on that. So. Mm -hmm. As best I can. So I'm applying the probe cover nice and tight over the top of it and just roll it down. Sort of like applying a condom. Okay. And then put a rubber band on to hold it in place. And that will also help hold the uh, ultrasound jelly in place and keep it from working its way down the probe. Okay. All right. So that's in place. How did you get training here on how to do this? Um, they offered an uh, IV ultrasound class to anybody who was interested. Uh, EMTs and nurses and doctors all go to it. And I just went and took the class, and then you have to be checked off. So I had to have somebody who knew how to do it. Right. Follow me and observe me do three before I was okay. able to do them on my own. Okay. All right. So you've been doing them now about three months, you said? Uh, I guess it's been three or four. Three or four That's months. Okay. So what's the indication for this particular IV? Um, she's a sickle cell pain patient. So for her to get her pain medications, we have to have an IV access. Okay. We also need to draw labs and... Uh, I attempted a peripheral IV access, was was unsuccessful. Okay. So, and I haven't been able to locate any other uh, surface veins that I can access. Okay. So. All right. Go ahead and put a tourniquet on to start with. As a sickle cell patient, you've probably had multiple IVs, and uh, so your veins are a little bit beat up, aren't they? Mm-hmm. And you know this video will end up on YouTube, but mm -hmm. I won't show your face. We'll Thank keep you. your identity. I'll even end up blurring your tattoo there. So. Oh, please do. Now I'm just finishing setting up everything so I'm ready once I have access obtained. Okay. All right. All right. So I like to clean a very large portion of the arm. So, no matter, so when I start looking for an access, wherever I find it at, I'm ready. Okay. So clean with the floor prep up and down the arm because I generally try to start with the forearm and work my way up as far as finding the neck. Yes. Okay. Or I, start, I start at the antecubital and we'll track down if I find a big antecubital see if it's straight enough to start here in the forearm. Okay. Um, if we, if I know we need... Because um, you know it hasn't been used that often down in the forearm, mm -hmm. typically, yeah. Yeah. Then after you've applied the floor prep, you have to allow it to dry for a minute. Okay. So once that's done, we can start looking. That was me applying the um, sterile lubricating jelly. It uses a uh, ultrasound medium. And we begin to scan for veins. And you adjust your gain and your depth. I like to start at about 2.6 and see what I see. There's a... So there's your depth right there. Yeah, there's so. your depth right okay. there. And then we just kind of scan the veins. And there's, she's got a nice... I got a little probe backwards. So how do you hold your probe? There's uh, markers on the probe that indicate, like this is the left side. So if you have that down with oriented to the left, when you move it on your screen, it moves, and the screen moves in the same way that you're moving your probe. Okay. If you have it backwards, it'll of course be moving in the opposite direction of what you're doing. Okay. So, and then there's also an indicator here that shows you exactly where that line is on the screen so that you know, that way when you line the vein up, you can see the marker, maybe it'll show up on the okay. film there. Okay. And that way you can see where exactly the needles go and when you, when you finally push it into the skin and into the arm. Right, that one is good, but it's kind of torturous. It twists and turns, so that one's not a good. That's, there's a vein there. It's a little small artery, it looks like. It doesn't collapse. The vein collapses. Uh-huh. And it goes. The winner right there. It's pretty deep over here. And you twist the knob to the left to lower your depth and right to increase how deep it goes. Okay. I might have to go a bit one right there. That's a nice, that's a beautiful thing. It is. Collapse in there. It's pretty straight. I can just get into it without any trouble. We will go with that one. All right, young lady. 
I'm going to get my needle ready. So because of the depth of these, when you start off with an eye look um, insertion, you go at a pretty steep angle, much steeper than you would for a peripheral. As you're going 2.2 centimeters down, you get into the vein. So, so you're doing a steep angle. Very steep angle. Okay. Somewhere 45 degrees or higher, usually. Some people do closer to 60 to 70. Not that I've ever actually put a protractor on one of these and looked at it, but... Understood. Uh, are you ready? Yes, right. sir. So. so when you go to insert, because of where that line's at in the vein, on the screen there, that lines up with the arrow in the probe. So that's where you stick with the needle. So we're okay. going to do a big stick here, okay? You ready? One, two, three, and big stick here. Good. You did good. So at this point, you're tracking your needle in the... It's giving us a shiny spot right there. It's really hard to see sometimes, but it's right there. And you can kind of just kind of bounce it back and forth to kind of see it and manipulate the tissue mm -hmm. around it. So then we go a little deeper. It's a shadow there. Yep, it's, there's the tip right there. That was one of my hardest things was learning to follow that tip. And I'm using the transverse uh, method. I've had a hard time with longitudinal. Have you? In so the past. transverse is Transverse, favorite. it works for me. I, I will, the longitudinal, when it works for me, the few times I've tried to use it, mm -hmm. is far easier to track the needle as it goes. But I have not had much luck with it in the past. So rather than put this young lady through me practicing the longitudinal in an awkward position, I'm just going straight in for. Side the so I need to back out just a little bit because you don't want to advance and swing around while you're trying to advance. I'm right above the vein again. We're going to try to get on into there. Alright. Should be coming into the vein now. Tip seems to be right in the vein. So that's when you want to lower your angle on your navel and advance a little farther into the actual vein itself so that when you push the catheter, it will slide on into the vein. Yes. She's telling me for her, the patient's telling me that she sees the blood return, yep. which I appreciate because I can't see it at the angle I'm at at all. There it is. There's the blood return. Yeah. She got it. She got it. Yeah. Trying to make sure we're going to each of them. You set your probe down and you advance the catheter. Just like so. I'll leave the uh, actual needle in the catheter until I get a sterile 4x4 in place so that any spillage, uh -huh. or to control the spillage, a little bit still gets on the patient, but not much. And then we're going to, I go ahead and attach as soon as I'm ready and switch over. I'll go ahead and attach my pigtail. Flush with normal saline and then draw back a waste because I'm going to be drawing labs off of this as well. Sure. Which I brought the vacuum trainer, which I failed to open. <laughs> but that's okay. It happens. It does. Everything else was perfectly prepared, so you did a great job. Thank you. And that's one of the, that's not the smoothest. I've had a couple that went a little smoother than that one did, but that was pretty smooth as far as I was well, And you even did it under pressure of being videotaped. For the that, first time. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Some of the people who taught me would be perfect people to watch on the video because they are so good. I followed Theta around whenever she would let me and watch her do these. Although I probably shouldn't mention names on the video. Okay. Alright, we have drawn the blood. And then once I have got this all taped down properly, which I will do and get started on now. So I'm going to clean up the site just a little bit. I don't have a second flush in my hand, but I may have one in my pocket. I do. We're going to flush all that blood out so we don't have any chance of coagulating in the line, which will take longer than I'm going to need anyways. But I'll Give it another good now flush. Take the tourniquet down? Or? I am. This is a good time to do that. I, should have, I was drawing the lab, so I forgot for a moment. Yep. And we got that. Now, the, because we put all this lubricating jelly on, you got to get all that off to really be able to secure this with a good tegaderm. 
I'll flush that again. I still want a little bit of blood in that line. I, did, I always have to use a couple of these to really get all that lubricating jelly off. Because otherwise your tegaderm is just going to slip right off. Any particular tricks on uh, tying it down? Benzoin ointment to help it stick if you're worried about, um, if it was so deep that you're worried about even a needle of this length. Yeah. Of holding moving. it in place and moving and coming out of the vein. But this was shallow enough that I'm not too worried about that. I placed the tegaderm over the, the site to, to provide an occlusive dressing so that nothing can get at it and protect the site from infection. And then I placed another piece of tape that holds it down in extra securement, followed by labeling it properly with the date, um, the time, and my initials. That's great. Well, good. Thanks so much for uh, allowing the video. Mm -hmm.